This is a Tracking the Tropics update with a certified most accurate weather team at First Coast News. Hey there, friends. I'm meteorologist Robert Spitta, joined by meteorologist Lee Southwick. Hello. Grew up right here on the First Coast. She knows the tropics here. So, Lee, you know, what, what are we looking at right now here uh, across the Atlantic? Of course, we have Gabrielle. But what are your thoughts? Just the first thoughts, put you on the spot on these two other areas that we have off here towards the south. Well, I will say this isn't uncommon for this time of year. Friendly reminder, this is a very active time of season. So we are normally watching this. Robert and I, the meteorologist, watching this very closely. Two areas that we are watching. You have that high chance of tropical formation, uh, the area shaded in red. 90% chance of formation in the next seven days. And it looks like still, for many days, models have shown it developing, but then curving back out into the Atlantic, a pattern that we have seen this season, and it looks like that is going to do the same thing. So we here on the First Coast, not as concerned with that, system 93l it's an invest 93l likely places like bermuda should watch it but then that medium chance of tropical formation this is where things get so interesting robert so right now this system is bringing rain and wind to portions of the leeward and windward islands it will bring rain to places like puerto rico once it reaches the bahamas could it develop into a tropical depression? There's a medium chance of that happening in the next seven days. Uh, and then a lot could happen here. I will say with the models this morning, and Robert, please correct me if you've seen something different. A lot of these models have kept it off of our coast. Mm. Some models have it kind of falling apart or joining with that other system that has a high chance of development, moving more towards the Carolinas, but staying off our coast. So if we saw any impacts and we were to believe the models this morning, it would be more maybe rip currents and seas, but uh, too early to say for sure right now. Uh, I'll come back to those models too in a second. We'll break it all down here for everyone. Um, but yeah, you know, those are the two areas we're definitely watching. By the way, we still have Gabrielle, which, you know, let, let's just touch on this. It is a specimen. I think that's the best way to put mm -hmm. it because it, it's still a cat for major storm thankfully passed just towards the east of bermuda and uh hamilton there of course the biggest city there on bermuda uh powerful winds about 140 miles per hour pressure now at 949 millibars and moving off towards north and east and you can see a lot of dry air kind of wrapping in on the western side of this storm system starting to see that shear interact with it as well and that really is giving a good outflow aloft as it pulls towards north and east but but at least at this time, we have a cat four. It is expected to gradually weaken up to a cat down to a cat three as we go ahead into Wednesday over towards Thursday and then moving towards the east as a cat one and eventually an extra tropical low as it nears the Azor Islands and maybe even around Portugal, western areas of Europe are going to be looking at some absolute nasty conditions. Mm. But do want to remind you yesterday. I don't know about you, Lee, but I was surprised when I saw this made major hurricane mm -hmm. status yesterday so quickly, a, a, a mm -hmm. very clear case of rapid intensification. Yeah, we, we knew it was going to intensify. We expected it to become a Category 3 major hurricane by tomorrow night. So yesterday morning when we came into work, it was already a major hurricane. That was surprising. It quickly, rapidly intensified, like you said. And now it's still holding at that strength, mm -hmm. too, Robert, and expected to, you can see there on the cone, a Cat 4 over the next couple of hours and then still only down into a category three so still staying a major hurricane for quite some time it is a monster of a storm robert i have a quick personal story too if you wouldn't mind showing that cone again yeah it goes out towards as you said Portugal. Okay, so back in middle school, I went on a Mediterranean cruise. We left out of uh, Barcelona, and then we went all around the Mediterranean. And this, we had escaped a hurricane nearing the first coast. We flew over to Europe. It caught up with us. Uh oh, that was the worst cruise ship I've ever been on. It wasn't a hurricane anymore, of course, as you can see. Uh, yeah. But it, the remnants of that hurricane, when they re reached the Mediterranean, we had waves crashing on the 11th story balconies. Oof. We were on the fourth floor of that cruise ship with ju not just a window that was completely underwater the whole time. I Ooh. fell out of my bunk bed, like in the middle of the night, I just got rolled right out of the bunk bed. 
Um, so I'm sorry, I'm laughing. This, no, no, it's it funny just brings now. Me back to my Navy days. And it like, was, yeah. You got a little salt on you there for it going was, through that. It was the first time I've ever been uh, motion sick, seasick, and it unfortunately stuck with me for the rest of my life. Now I always get seasick. It's a good, but, it's a good memory on a vacation, though. And, like, after the fact, you're like, okay, I guess. So I just it was want, a trip. So it's just to let people know, you know, I don't know if anyone's maybe traveling over there, but these systems, they still really yes. impact areas in Europe, too. And, and especially um, there's a couple of surf spots if we still had our former chief uh, Tim Deegan here you know exact spot I'm talking about there's a place off of, of uh, Portugal mm, mm-hmm. which has some of the largest waves in the world like I all saw the... that documentary mm, there you go 100 foot wave well so this is probably going to be the type of setup to create said waves I mean this powerful storm off towards the uh, east and uh Definitely no good weather for them. Now let's bring it back closer to home because we have those other two areas we were just talking about here. You know, before I get into it, me and Lee have been kind of eyeing this. Look at this area just towards the north of Hispaniola. Um, Kind of interesting. Oops, wrong way. Uh, kind of interesting, a little bit of an upper level low there. Now, yeah. it, we got to mention it because we know you all see it. Yes. And there, it's not highlighted by the National Hurricane Center. Mm. But sorry to interrupt, Rob. We're just, oh, you're good. We're, we're, we're showing you guys because we know you're not blind. You're seeing that, that rotation too. So, one thing a lot of people don't understand though is with tropical systems, you need actually a anticyclonic aloft. So, you want a high pressure loft. So, when we say an upper level low, these um, basically are, I like to share, they're not conducive for tropical systems but sometimes sometimes i have seen them work their way down towards the surface and then they form an anticyclone aloft it's a lot of steps usually they spin themselves out but it's worth watching that's why the nhc isn't uh keeping an eye on it though because it's not conducive at this time but then uh, we were just talking about these earlier and you know this area just over the windward islands and leeward islands bringing some heavy rainfall we have another one just towards the east my thoughts on this lee though is that they're they're just my general idea is I think they're too close to each other, mm-hmm. and they could let's say we have two storms that form, they could kind of almost steal the energy from each other. And mm-hmm. plus, um, a lot of people you got to remember that hurricanes are basically like a, a deep hole. So if you have a very deep but narrow hole, if you fall into that you know, you're going to fall down. If you have two holes next to each other that are kind of more of a trench, like you're not going to have as much of a steep of a gradient. And I think that's what could happen with these. These two lows, they kind of form this trench between each other and you get this kind of big broad trough coming off of it. Now, Lee, I know you were looking at the spaghetti plots here. Um, What are your thoughts on these between this one, 93 and 94 here all right well 94 i don't like that one why is it going Mm. west we i think we know the flow so there's you see t-a-b-d that model trend that's the path i think it's going to take also as you can see there too robert it, it curves it really quickly while yesterday we had this trying to move towards the first coast it's something we were watching closely i think there might even show it kind of merging into a bigger system with that other invest. So if Mm. you go back to the other invest, you'll see that path. That's what I think is more likely to happen with these systems are going to move to the Northwest. Um, I think the areas like coastal North Carolina, the Outer Banks, you can't let your guard down yet. But so with these two systems, as Robert said, they're gonna fight for energy. Uh, They're gonna kind of compete with each other for those ingredients needed to strengthen. And so now Robert is showing us the model. So this is the GFS model and it it shows that one system starting to develop staying off of our coast so that's why this morning we we're not as concerned yesterday some models were bringing that system with the medium chance of development closer to us and now a lot of these models either showing one of them falling apart uh one of them they're kind of merging I, did you see the European model? So, I think it was the AI model had a little Fujiwara effect trying yeah, to go for it. Yeah, and I got the Euro model That's here. It. I know it says GFS on the top of the screen. I forgot to fix that again. But anyways, point is, yeah, you can kind of see this. You got two areas of low there you go. right there. there. Two. Now, what Lee's talking about with the Fujiwara effect, it, it is not a term you need to be kind of scared about, no. if anything. No, it's and it's not even said, it's not. I'm not saying it's going to happen. Oh, yes, yeah. But the, basically, you get yeah. two lows, right? And they form kind of a high pressure in the middle of them. And they dumbbell around each other. They do a dance. They do a little dance, yes. And um, it does, when it truly happens, it does make the forecast a little bit tricky, mm-hmm. which I think goes back to also the, the sense that... Um, 
you see how there's kind of the difference between the GFS and the ECMWF. One wants to show a powerful storm system east. ECMWF shows two storms. I, I think we need to really kind of see which one of these two areas that we're monitoring kind of wins out mm -hmm. in the energy game because right now we don't have a defined low level circulation so i think the models are bouncing all over the place they right. are leaning towards this area towards the right but um they're kind of fighting each other for this energy so we have to see which one kind of spins up that's why like the the point the main purpose of this is what we're trying to tell you all mm -hmm. is that we don't know yet and that's we're going to be honest with you we we showed you all the possible outcomes and there's a bunch of them and that's why we just ask you to keep checking back in because we will know more as these as they develop more we really need like a closed center of circulation to form to really get the models to get a good grip on them so there's a lot of things that could happen right now with these two systems and it's it's not definite so please continue to check back in for updates but i think Robert, my takeaway is that there's no immediate cause for panic here on the first coast, but there's uncertainty with these two, so that's why we ask you to check back in. And you know, I, this is another thing, just even looking way ahead. So I was just showing the shear here, and I think one thing that we're showing is with both of these, we expect it to kind of turn towards the north and mm -hmm. east of Florida. Um, but if we look way ahead, I think the area we would want to watch for any impacts here on the first coast would be maybe out here in the deep tropics. Now, nothing's really indicating it at this time, but if something did form out there, it would want mm -hmm. it would be something to kind of miss this little wall that we've had protecting us with a jet stream uh, here in the state of Florida. So, just something. What do you What do you think? What do you think heading into October? Uh, you. Uh, I Put you on the spot. You going for a storm here or just what are your thoughts oh in general? Oh my gosh. Well, I'm praying for not one. Well, yeah, uh, <laughs> yeah, of course. That's, that's not what I'm, I meant yes, by no, that. I, I, think I really want to clarify it for everybody at home. We don't want a storm. I mean, what are your thoughts? So early Could October, I think the, the pattern that we've seen does break down a bit. And so that would be more of a concern. And that's what I think. I think that's what you're saying is yes. that to our, our block, the Oh, the pattern that we've had that's kept us uh, kept these storms moving away from us kind of breaks down some early October and so that's when we would be watching really closely any sort of tropical wave any sort of system out there because then we're a bit more vulnerable and so that's why early October we're going to be watching it really closely for you all. All right. Well, um, our next Norrent name would be Humberto and Melvin. Um, Umberto. Um, Umberto. Um, Umberto. Am, am I saying it right? I was trying to look up the pronunciation this morning from mm. the NHC. I believe we do not pronounce the H. Oh. Going to. Well, now we know. I'm going to look this up for yeah. you, though, one more time. That one's going to be one of those ones everybody's going to have to correct each other on. Um, Jerry and Karen, back to back, just the greatest naming scheme. All right. And then we got Lorenzo, Melissa, and Nestor. So, yeah, Umberto, which uh, I guess that's how you properly pronounce it. It's our next one. Um, if you have any questions, though, please, you can shoot myself or Lee or anybody here on the First Coast News weather team um, a message. Uh, the other thing is check out firstcoastnews.com slash Hurricane Central. We got all, a lot of the graphics we've used here are readily available for you there as well, so you can kind of do your own little forecasting. But I'm meteorologist Robert Spetta, joined by, of course, meteorologist Lee Southwick. Yeah, here. thank you for joining us. Uh, of course, we're just going to continue to watch it closely for you each and every day. We'll bring you these tropical updates always on Hurricane Central on First Coast News Plus, too. So don't forget, you can always check back there on our website and our app and, and get the latest on the tropics. All right. Anything else? Good. All right. We'll watch it for you. Have a good one.